How's it going, you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs. Now, I'm a big believer all of us as homeowners should have a plan for a power outage, and that is a multiple day power outage scenario. You need to identify your critical appliances, and if you're in northern states like I am, your gas furnace is going to make that list. So I want to help you make sure your gas furnace is ready to go and to be powered, whether it's a gas generator, portable power station, or really even a car battery. A few simple components like this is going to have you ready to go where you can switch over in minutes. So let's jump into it. Now you should have a light switch right on your furnace. We'll turn to the off position. I'm going to remove this cover, not remove the switch yet, and then confirm with the non-contact voltage tester that we are still seeing power there. You'll see by the red LED at the line side coming from the circuit. We want that off. So go out to your circuit breaker panel. Number eight position for me is the furnace. I'll flip that off and then we will confirm with that same non-contact voltage tester that we do not have power. Everything is green to go. Once that's confirmed, flip around here. I always prefer the number one square drive, which this Klein Tools 11 to one has. And you'll see a link in the description. This is a great DIY screwdriver. Then we'll go ahead and look inside the furnace by taking the cover off. And there should be a small junction box you'll see on the other side of that handy box. I'll just have one small screw with a flathead screwdriver, take that off. And then what I'm doing, and this is why I love these Wago lever nuts, they're super easy to take off. You can reconfigure your circuit and that's exactly what we're doing here. So the neutral and hot coming from the furnace. Now with the grounds, I'm going to keep that one in place and we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second. But then back at the handy box, let's go ahead and take off our two hots here going to our single pole light switch. That is not going to be reused. And then the extra wire I pulled off, I am going to reuse that here in a second. But we'll just pull that neutral back out to the handy box. So now we're ready to install our switch outlet combo. And there is one small detail you do not want to forget or it'll trip you up a little bit and then an extension cord. So we'll install this extension cord basically to the furnace. This is a six foot long, 14 gauge extension cord, and you'll see links in the description below the video for all the supplies and tools that we're using today. Then once we have everything plugged in, we'll actually measure the power so we'll know what kind of power do we have to deliver to power this appliance. And also if we're using a battery setup, how long would that run so you can make the appropriate plans for your own home. Now first up, let's take the knockout of the bottom of the handy box and we'll go ahead and pry that out with the Knipix wire strippers. Then we'll put a 3 8 of an inch cable clamp and tighten that down. This is going to provide strain relief for the extension cord that will feed up and through there. Feed that extension cord up and through, through the bushing and into the furnace. I'm going to leave the insulation, black insulation on, but let me know down in the comments, would you have taken that off and just let the wires go in? Now, once that insulation's in there, let's go ahead and tighten things up, ensuring we have as much slack as we need. Then we'll go on the inside there on the furnace and we'll take our huts, which are the black wires, and I'll go ahead and twist the stranded wires and clip that down just a little bit as there's a little excess compared to what's needed in a Wago 221 lever nut that we'll attach here. So the hot sides are done with that two wire. And I will trim back that black insulation just a bit so we have a little bit more wire freed up. Now be careful when you're working on HVAC, any of that metal there is very sharp and you can easily cut yourself. Even better, probably cut resistant gloves would be a good option. Then we'll also connect up our neutrals with a two wire Wago lever nut. Then we just have our grounds to bring together, trim things up and then use a three wire and bring all those together where now we have our hot, neutral, and grounds brought together. Then we'll tighten up the cover again and then we're done on the inside. So on this side, the way this works here is we have our single pole switch up top. So on this side, we're gonna bring our hot coming in from our 15 amp circuit to the gold screw terminal. Neutral goes to the silver screw terminal now, if I wanted, I could pull another pigtail from this side over to my grounding screw, but I'm going to remove these little plastic washers here. So when we screw down this yoke into the handy box, that will actually complete the grounding circuit because the ground pegs are connected to the actual yoke itself. And we have equipment ground on the backside, which is tied in through a bushing handy box to the junction box on the inside of the furnace. So that's where we're completing our ground. If you want to be just doubly safe, you could pull another pigtail back through and just bring that over here. Or you can bring your ground down into the handy box 
and then pull a pigtail, putting that into the furnace, and then one over here to your outlet switch combo. So hot side, neutral. Then, because this is a switch, right, it's going to control this top side. If you do nothing, you will always have this screw terminal powered, which is going to be powering this outlet. But what we need to do is there's a small tab right there that we need to remove. And what that will do is it will make sure that this side is not powered and we'll do a jumper wire. So then we'll have control at the switch. We can turn on or off. That will turn power on or off at the screw terminal. And then the wire will bring that screw terminal together. So now we'll have on off control down here to this screw terminal, which powers the outlet. And then that is what this cord that we just installed is plugged into. We'll wire all that up. Still doesn't make sense. We're gonna show it in a demo where we're powering it. And then that should all come together. Or just also let me know in the comments if you have any questions. So I'll try to get this tab off. It's actually pretty small. So you're gonna need some needle nose pliers that will be able to grab onto it, work it back and forth and break it off. Then confirm you do not have any portion of that tab still there. Once that's confirmed, I'll bring the hot side to the gold terminal clockwise around the screw terminal, and I'll make a J hook on the neutral going to the silver terminal, again, running clockwise around that screw terminal. Then on the other side, again, we have separation, but we need that jumper wire. So the switch will control the power being on or off at the outlet. I'll make a small J hook and go ahead and tighten that down. Now I will take off all these tabs. When you're going into a small handy box, you want those tabs removed because it'll help the actual outlet or switch or whatever you're installing sit flush to the handy box. So the circuit's back on and I want to test things out. So I'll get my non-contact voltage tester up and running, put it into the hot side, flip my switch, confirm it's hot. Okay, so now we know we have power and my furnace would work normally. Normal operation. I have my wire kind of up out of the way. You don't have to have as long of a wire this. This is about five foot extension. I just want it long enough to plug right into my portable power station without any extension cord. That was my plan. You could have a very short one and then just use an extension cord to wherever you need it. So that would be normal operation powered on. But we want to run this with the portable power station and measure the power so you have that for your own planning. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this guy in. We'll turn on our portable power station. Once it comes up, and then I'll turn on my AC. Now this will start powering. I'm also gonna turn my thermostat on, call for heat to this unit. We'll let it go through the full cycle, the inducer fan turning on, pulling a vacuum, the igniter going, the burner starting, and the blower fan. Then we'll check the power to see how much it's drawing. So you'll see power on the right-hand side, 155 watts. It's still starting up. Then the blower fan turned on, pulled 2,000 plus watts, for just a few seconds, then settle back down to just over 1100 or 1150 watts. So those are the power numbers you would need to either match a generator up, or maybe you're doing just a car battery and an inverter, so getting the right inverter. Don't forget to plan for that surge. That surge we saw was at least 2000 watts, and you'd probably want a little bit of buffer above that. The EcoFlow Delta 3, which is a great size portable power station, but at that power draw, this size unit would only last probably about 50 or 55 minutes without bringing in solar or without bringing in one of their smart generators. So it's not gonna last that long for this size of unit. This is a pretty large air handler and it does pull quite a bit of power. Just know if you're doing a portable power station or sometimes even a generator, you might need one of these. It's a neutral to ground. It just has the neutral and ground connected together. Because you do not have a ground for your generator or your portable power station, depending on the age of your unit, that might flake it out. So you might need one of these plugs. And just like everything else, you'll see below the video in the description for your reference on your own project. Now, if you wanna see what it would take to get kind of a whole home backup system using portable power stations, you can check out this video right here. And it features the new EcoFlow Delta Pro 3s, which are pretty darn capable, plug in in my garage, and then they can power pretty much anything in my house minus my air conditioner. Or if you wanna look at an alternative route of powering a furnace, check out this video down here. My buddy Dave over at the DIY HVAC guy will show you how to power that using an inverter coming off your vehicle. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on one of those next ones. Take care.